All right. Y'all ready for God's word? Yes. Amen. So uh, we're we're in, still in the book of Luke here. We're looking at uh, what um, Jesus said. That's the series, and the title of today's sermon is "Yes, Sir." Let's go ahead and read from Luke uh, chapter six, starting in verse forty-three. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I will show you what it is like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the, waters, when the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it is well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against the house, it will collapse into a heap of ruin. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for the day that you've given us. We thank you for watching over us and taking care of us, Lord. We thank you for your word. We just ask that you would unpack it now, that we can understand it fully. And then that uh, we can accept the hard truths that are here. Um, your, your words the past few weeks have not been easy. And a lot of us have had a hard time accepting them and especially following them. Lord, we would ask that you would change our hearts, that you would make us like you, that we would find holiness, Lord especially through this message today. In Jesus' name, amen. So you don't get wormy apples off a healthy tree, do you? We've all went and, and picked apples. I would, I would imagine every one of us has picked an apple off a tree. And you can look at the tree and see whether that's going to be a good apple or not so good apple because, what, well, you get blight on the trunk, right? And you get this, this growth on there and it starts to look all bad. And so when you go to bite into an apple, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what it's going to taste like. It's going to be meh or meh. But if the trunk looks really good, then chances are, if you bite into that apple, you're going to have a nice, good apple. This is what Jesus is saying about, about our life. The way we live good or bad. We need to live a good, clean life uh, to be great examples for God. And the, 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 the health of an apple tells the health of the tree, so the health of us tells the health of our heart. And it does say, right, that we say what we, what we really think. I'd like to think that's not true, but it is, isn't it? And I have this little thing where I will, uh, I'll, I'll say something negative, and then I'll, uh, did I say that out loud? So I'll call somebody a name or something like that. Did I say that out loud? Or, you know, really say what I think, and then did I say that out loud? And whoever's standing around me will chuckle a little bit. Y yeah, you said that out loud. But I really meant to say it. Sometimes nastiness just comes out, right? Because inside each one of us, no matter how much Jesus we have, inside each one of us, we still have some old nastiness, don't we? We've still got an old rotted apple hidden in there someplace. Jesus, 
you know, he's, he's talking about this, uh, this way we're supposed to live. Your, your true being brims over into true words and deeds. So the person that's deep inside comes out in how we act and what we do. So are we doing things for the church? Are we acting right? Or are we too tied up into all of our own stuff to be worried about that? Yeah, we show up to church, but how much stuff do we do for the church? Some of you are starting to do a few things at the church, but you know what? A lot of us don't. We just let it go. We let somebody else take care of it. Because what's on the inside, right, is showing what's on the outside. And I've said it time and time again, if you love God, you'll love the things that God loves. And what does God love? The church. God loves the church. He's put it here to spread His Word. And yet, that Word that we hear every Sunday morning, we just kind of let go and, and let it be. And so Jesus says, why are you so polite to me? You always say, yes, sir. That's right, sir. Or what the New Living Testament says, you keep calling me Lord, Lord, which is teacher or master or in modern language, yes, sir. What is it? What does it matter if you say yes, sir, but then you just keep on doing the same thing? I had an example of this this week. Um, Shar, you knew it was coming. I don't know where she is. I can't see her. She's sitting on the floor back there. Um, so we've got a new tool at the at the cafe. It's for scrubbing floors. It's a RYOB scrubbing tool. It's got water, you hook to it and turn the button on and it goes around and you can scrub the walls and you can scrub the floors and all kinds of stuff. So one, you know, one day we did one half of the floor and then the next day we did the other half of the floor. Well, one day, it was a Tuesday, we started scrubbing the floor, everything is good, no, no problem, except for we got a little bit of a mess and so we're starting to clean it up and, and everything worked out fine. That was on Tuesday, but on Wednesday, that's Charlene's day to come in. And um, so we, I started scrubbing the floor and, you know, there's water that comes out. So there's water that lays on the floor and then you got to mop it up and everything like that. And Char says, I'll mop it, I'll mop it, I'll mop it. I'm like, okay, then you can go mop it. Do I need a wet mop or a dry mop, she asked. I'm like, Lord, have mercy, this is already going south. And I said, you're going you're gonna to need water so you can wring the dirty mop out. And uh, she goes, okay. So she went and got the water. About 40 minutes later, she comes back. And there's a puddle. Half the kitchen is puddles of water. She takes the mop, and she slings it into the water, and then lifts it up in the air like this, and throws the dirty water all over the walls. And I'm like, Char, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't do it like that. You're going to have to wash all the walls now, too. This is how you do it. And I show her. She goes, she's like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. She didn't say yes, sir. But she said, okay. Same thing. She's like, okay, I got it. I got it. And then she kept doing the same thing over and over, slinging it, picking it, and just slinging the mop everywhere. I'm like, why do you say yes, sir? Why do you say, okay, I got it, and you don't got it? This is just, I mean, I might as well just be beating my head up against the wall. But we do the same thing to God, don't we? We do the exact same. Oh, yeah, I know how to mop. I got it. I got it. And we're slinging water all over the place. The whole cafe's got to be sprayed down now. We're going to bring a pressure washer in and just wash everything because Char's got it. Jesus says, why are you saying yes, sir, but you don't do what I say? But you don't follow the scriptures. But you don't follow the example set for you. See, I took the I took the mop from her. And I said, This is how you do it. And I showed her how to how to mop. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Slinging it everywhere. I'm like, oh my goodness. 
So we sit down and we read the Word of God. Or we come to church and we hear the Word of God. I'm like, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Amen. When you say amen, that means and so be it. I agree. So you agree with the Word of God, but okay. Where does it go from there, guys? How do you apply it? That's what Jesus is saying. You're calling me teacher, and you know that I have authority to teach you. You hear, but you don't listen. Or you listen, but you don't hear. I don't know which it is. One, it goes in one ear and out the other, basically, right? And the other, you apply it. So, are you listening? Are you hearing? Are you applying? Why are you so polite to me, always saying, yes, sir, and that's right, sir, but never doing a thing I tell you? These words I speak to you are not mere additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. The words that Jesus is teaching you, they are foundation words foundation to build your life on. So when you look at the scriptures, that is a foundation for you to build your life on. It is not a suggestion for you to pick and choose. It is not a a random, it's not a choose your own adventure book where you can pick what you believe and, and throw away what you don't. Jesus gives us the Bible because it's the foundation for us to build our life on. And if, we, and if we're smart and we're a smart carpenter, what do we do? We lay down the words of Christ and we live on those. So that way when the winds of life come, we're going to stand firm. We won't get blown away. Or we can be a real dumb carpenter. And we can just throw a bunch of two-by-fours out on the ground and build right on the ground. And you know what happens to stuff that gets just built on the ground without without a foundation? It may look okay for, for right now, but it doesn't take very long before it's all crooked and rickety and starting to rot away. And so if you don't have the Bible as your foundation, your life starts to rot away. You start to not look so good. You start to look like that bad tree that has the rotted apples. Or the Living Testament, or the New King James said the the fig tree. But we don't have fig trees around here, so we use apple trees so we can understand a little better. We We don't want to be rotted inside. So if we want our life to mean something and not be a total loss, we have to just not say, yes, sir. We have to live. Live what the Bible says. Remember, these are the words of Jesus. These are not mine. Jesus is teaching this to a whole group of people and especially his his apostles and all the disciples there. And if we're true disciples of Jesus, we'll take this, we'll apply it right here so that the nastiness that's still there will stay buried deep and eventually be overcome by God's good so we can show that to everybody else. Now I challenge you, church has got a lot of stuff going on. I challenge you to help out. Step up. Do your part. Because what's inside shows by our actions, right? It really does. You don't say, oh, I can't, I can't do that. I, 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 that's not, there's nothing for me to do. Oh, there's loads and loads and loads. So, and, uh, okay, we're trying to work down, we're paying down our credit card. Um, we need to raise $30,000, so we pay it off and then have a little nest egg in the bank. So um, we're, this is something that we're working on, and I hope you're praying about. Um, dig deep, drop it in the box. 
God will give it back. I promise you, He will give it back. And the uh, Bible says tenfold, right? He will give it back. So there's been lots of you that have seen this principle work. And I challenge the rest of you to, to try it out because He wants to bless you. And uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the day. Lord, we look forward to the food that we're going to eat. Um, I just pray that you would bless the rest of our fellowship together. In Jesus' name, amen.